Hi everybody, this conversation with Sarati suffered from... Hey, thanks for joining back. Uh, yes, I'm just waiting for Sarati to come back. The, con the, the connection was very poor. Let's try this. Yeah. Hello. Yes, boss. Can you hear me now? I can, yeah. Sorry about that. Okay. Yes. So we were talking about hip hop in um in India. Yeah. So you started listening to all that hip hop coming from India, uh, you know, being generated in India and you started to get in influence influenced by that. Yeah, I was just fascinated by the whole scene, you know. So I wanted to kind of go and collaborate with a few MCs that I really liked from there. Yeah. Um yeah. And that's what I did over the course of like 2017 to 19, basically. Um, and then in the meanwhile, the album, the idea of the album became much larger than just working with like uh, hip hop, like MCs from India. Mm. It became, at the time I was spending some time in Dubai, in Abu Dhabi as well. And I met this person, Deepak Unnikrishnan, who is a fantastic novelist, uh, written this book, great book called Temporary People, which everyone should read. I'm going to post it here. Just so that people know. Temporary well. people. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and basically, I wanted him on the album. So he jumped on it. You know, he recorded a piece that's called Pravasis. It's the last piece on the album. Yeah. Um, and then I met Zia as well, our dear friend Zia Ahmed. Who's so, so, yes. Yeah, Zia, how, carry on. I, I had a question about him for you, but then. Yeah, yeah. So, I mean, the album quickly became about you know, not just working with Indian MCs, but about a whole South Asian experience, like it being diasporic South Asians and also Indians from India. And um, I wanted it to be about showcasing what like South Asian culture could be from different perspectives, basically, you know. Mm -hmm. So it's not necessarily just an Indian perspective. It's also Zia, who's grown up in Cricklewood, you know, um, yeah. grown up here all his life and what it's like for him to be brown. And what it's like for Deepak in Abu Dhabi to be brown. What it's like for somebody like MC Mawali, who's in Bombay, to be brown. Uh, somebody like Taru, who Delhi Sultanate, who's kind of grown up between like Berlin and Delhi. What it's like for him to be brown. So like different perspectives on being brown, man. And like to kind of drive home that point that like we're all from different spots. Uh, and there's like, um, yeah, multiple kind of ways to be who we are. Okay. That often often gets kind of missed out in the kind of mainstream cool. narrative. Cool. So this was the basis for that album, basically. I get that. So I mean, do you, do you fancy? Um, I mean, you know, there's, uh, you know, we've talked a bit about your your parkour, about your your, your recording. Uh, before we go <laughs> towards, um, you all met uh, Vijay Ayer. Vijay Ayer is a hero of mine, man. Massive hero. Yeah. I've I've seen him on a, a Skype call actually just last week. Uh, I didn't speak to him personally, but uh, he's 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 the guy. Um, he's, he's a heavyweight, that guy. Heavy. Also, not just his music, but his 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 writing. I'm a big fan. I love him for everything he does. Yeah. Shout out. He's really he's a real articulate guy. I I saw him at the at the Vortex um, quite a few years ago, and I had a. Sh you know, maybe a five minute conversation with me. I was like, wow. I mean, this guy is able to express his thoughts in, you know, in such a clear way, mm. um, you know, and, 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 and he's playing and his music sort of really reflected that sort of mind, you know? Yeah, man, absolutely. This was, you know, before I could articulate anything about being like Brown in jazz, uh, he was kind of the only other guy who I knew who was doing it also like and so like to read what he was saying um, to read about how he kind of the challenges he had gone through with kind of his work being perceived by the industry and mm -hmm. the kind of amount of like commodifying like commodification and exoticization that his work had gone through and what he had experienced and how yeah. he kind of took over his own narrative and where his music's at. I just found like, yeah, really inspiring. Like, you know, I think, and that's something that, you know, we haven't really talked about, but like kind of like the lack of role models in, in, in the music industry, especially in the kind of spaces that we, we are in at the moment, you know, like people, yeah. 
just yeah. don't look like us in 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 this UK jazz thing for an example yeah. you know yeah it's it's interesting you know i remember we had a conversation recently about how you know obviously there's been so much talk about identity in in the music world and the jazz world um recently and uh, and 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 you know we were talking about where where do we fit into this you know especially in the uk as you know there's there's i think in 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 music sports and you know sort of culture in general there's a lot of representation uh of of you know other sections of the population you know but in terms of the representation for uh in you know as asians uh it's it's still um the role models and and the, uh, apart from freddy mercury uh the role but i mean there's an argument where like you know freddy was like how much of his success was down to his like almost like the media kind of hiding his indianness you know well yeah i mean that's interesting about freddy mercury because he changed his name yeah he you know he was a parsi so yeah. he looked he looked very much fair, uh, very fair yeah yeah you know but but you know in terms of 2020 and now you know it's it, the representation or or you know having some role models uh, it's still it's still coming you know there's not that many people yeah. doing it uh i mean when was the last time you saw an asian like southeast asian football player or something yeah. you know yeah like that that i mean i'm sorry i'm jumping from music to sports but i'm talking about you know yeah, yeah. Uh, popular culture in general it's yeah. it's it just doesn't happen yeah it's difficult and but... go on sorry, sorry. yeah go no on. no and i just wonder whether it is is it because the the families shout uh, out hamza you know, choudhury yeah man leicester city yeah 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 there you go but he's he's one of the rare ones like the only one at the moment i think yeah yeah i mean how much is that you know because of the inside the families there's no encouragement to go and do music so much or doing sports or um i mean what is it you know because obviously we'll human beings and sure and, man i mean and, it's a combination of all those things you just mentioned like lack of support from like a uh, family like um, people's like economic position where you're from it's also such a class thing it's of course a race thing um it's a gender thing is so many things man like that contribute to like the lack of uh, brown creatives like especially in the diaspora you know yeah. but i think like ultimately for me it comes down to like also coming to a point in my like career being like you know what man just got to just got to do it and like yeah there aren't that many role models but like just got to make your own way and there there comes a point yes. where it's like yeah you don't really see that you don't see those people in front of you but it's like you start trying to be in those positions when maybe nobody else has kind of been there at least in the last 5 6 years you know of course there's been people in the in the past like you know even with asian underground stuff happening here in the uk yeah. but Yeah, yeah it's about the Dev Foundation, I guess. Yeah. I yeah, I mean, that. it can be quite a liberating thing as well, man. Like you know, like no one, I don't know of any other kind of you know crossover musicians like yourself or like you know. And so in a way, you make your own rules, man. You just do your thing. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, you know what I find amazing about you, in a way, is that like this combination of like Creole, French, English, like madness, and like when you're singing. like yeah what's amazing is that like often you're kind of moving between like we we've got we've got a rich and that just joined yeah 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 he, he's a guy i knew from school sick <laughs> clear he's his name is clemo anyway so yeah, yeah i mean th- there is there is that combination going on um and 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 a lot of the time you know that sort of um that asian background and the the sort of that that these are just echoes in my mind you know from my grandmother i still have the melodies i've lost all the words mm. you know but i still have the melodies so um, yeah but like what's interesting about the way you sing is that often like when you're performing no one's quite sure what language you're singing in yeah Do you know what i mean like it kind of feels like a foreign language to everyone but i like that i like i that love tension. that i love that that, that tension works yeah absolutely because then you're foreign to everyone at the same time you know and then then the response yeah. is always like 
this like thing of like yeah hearing a language that you're not familiar with but everyone again there's like a certain like equalizing effect that that has yeah but then everyone's well, on the same page. and you, you know the, this this happened with um, you know that band nope. the cocteau twins god not know yes have, have you heard of a band called the cocteau twins no So the Cocteau Twins are this kind of, the kind of this 80s dream pop kind of band and the singer uh Elizabeth Fraser you know she's sung on that um on that uh, massive attack tune you know uh, uh what's it called tear drops oh, yeah. Da, da, yeah. Da, 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 da. you know that tune but in her own band in the Cocteau Twins she used to sing a lot in you know sort of made up language and stuff and um and 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 you know that was quite i think people used to say well that was quite mesmerizing but didn't understand what you said but it, mm. they felt something from it yeah, you know yeah. and that's interesting about the you yeah know, absolutely man and i think like yeah i i'm just fascinated by people who sing in like yeah these languages that no one can understand and it's uh, yeah it's almost like you well, know, you're I, also then treating you're treating the voice a bit more like the instrument in the sense that you yeah. then people's only real reference point is the notes and the melodies themselves which oh, is basically oh, what you, is. you know you, you know what there's something else uh, there's this amazing artist from la reunion mm-hmm. called uh, daniel and put, put his name I in love the put his word. name in there man put his name down yeah i'll, I'll type it, it. yeah yeah um and what i love about him about the way he actually sings in creole which a lot of people in la reunion say oh they don't understand i think he, he i mean I, i kind of feel like him a lot of the time fixed it's a language from a new uh, a, a new a new society it's a language that is still being still evolving still evolving very much like french or or, mm-hmm. or or spanish evolved from latin very much you know like the creole in in la reunion mauritius or rodrigues that language is being born right now so it's right. still really open to being stretched and interpreted in 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 different yeah. ways yeah either you you can still do a lot of new, you know create new words or use different kind of sounds with it i, I just feel it's such a it's almost like a, it's a very improvisational language in some mm. ways, you mm. know but that's my inter- that's my opinion you know so yeah 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 but that's exciting i think if you can even if it's not true for like whatever languages if you if you can feel that kind of ability to be able to do that uh with anything then that's always exciting isn't it yeah. with music like hey dude dude so we stop boring people with chats and should we hear some some vibes all right cool what should we do should i uh I've got play, I've got do you want to play of, some of those city rhythms? I'm trying to figure out how to do the how best to do that. Oh 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 do you want to play us some hang on this is the awkwardness. Great title by the way. You've been you've been to sit in while in Indiana this winter. What do you reckon does it this is a potential result in New York City which is That's really interesting, you know. So maybe quickly touch upon this. Um what's this metal band Anal Nakar? Okay. Yeah. yeah that's interesting. Yeah. Amazing band. Out. Check that out. Brutal band, man. You got to check them out. Oh yeah. No, not rock. Oh well, so just quickly like uh in response to post colonial awkwardness, I was um I was in India this winter and I got to go visit Shaheen Bagh for a bit just for one evening. But it was um for people who don't know Shaheen Bagh has kind of become like the center of the resistance against the CAA. NCR bill thing um and if you don't know about that um let's go into detail i think like just just google shine bug and you'll see what i'm talking about um but it was an interesting time for me at that point it was just after the delhi elections so uh aam aadmi party had just won and it was kind of like a very victorious time almost you know it was kind of a weird time where like hate politics hadn't uh you know worked basically bjp politics hadn't worked and um so it was almost like this festive atmosphere in shahin bagh at the time um, yeah i loved it but then as soon as like i left like 3 days later uh the delhi riots happened so suddenly everything just went you know like the the mood was up there and it went all the way down so but like 
I don't know, man. Like in terms of like where this can go, uh, there are, there are a few people who are writing like response tunes and like artistically speaking. But I think like in the urban, um, like independent music scene is still very much kind of like confined to its kind of elitism and like upper middle classness. And I don't know how much of it like ultimately will like result in um, you know much music like any any kind of relevant art. But yeah. um, maybe we're looking in the wrong places. Is what I'm saying. Like maybe we need to look at like the women in Shaheen Bagh and see what kind of tunes they're listening to. Like what are the what are the songs on the street? Uh, uh, stop looking to like the kind of independent scene in India, which is predominantly like upper middle class, to like have any responses to this because it's just not going to come from there. I don't think that's my personal yeah. view. Uh, I am very much part of that scene in some ways as well. So I, you know, there's a hypocrisy there if I'm calling out people. But um, yeah. That's 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 my quick take on that. Um, I'm just trying to see if I can play some Siddhi stuff. You know, if me. if not if not some Siddhi rhythms, if if you could play maybe some um, some rhythms on tabla that you like. I was, you know, we did a test with Pete earlier on to see if yeah. we could play together. Uh -huh. And there's unfortunately a bit of a lag rhythmically, so it'd be difficult. Cool. But yeah. But I found, look at, look at what I've got here. Look at what I've got here. I found this in a... I um... can't see. I can't see. Hang Where on. is it? I found this auto harp. <laughs> you know auto harps? Oh, yeah. Yeah. I found this in a, in a, in a car boot sale. Fuck, I'm shaking, uh -huh. man. Um, I found this in a car boot sale. And because... You can do really long, stretched out notes. Yeah. Um. No. <laughs> Hello. Yeah, I can see you. No, hang on. I'll put it. I'll, I'll put it closer. Mhm. Mm yeah, man. Beautiful. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. So I was thinking maybe, you know, because I can do these long, if you want to play some tabla or something, you know, I can just, oh, yeah. do, it could work with the tabla, even with the, um, with the lag. I, I hear some people are recommending, you know, jamar.net and um, we'll, we'll have to try that at some point. Yeah, at some point. I've just did a quick search on my laptop to see if I can find any uh, Siddhi music. Just gonna play a couple yeah. samples and see if it's the right thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think people would love to hear that. I definitely would love to hear that. Yeah. Hear this. That's it. So while, while, while you do this, keep... Oh, wait, let me... So these are some of the original samples that I recorded when I was there. Uh, unmixed, just like stuff that sort of straight off my hard drive. Check this out. Trying to see if I can find something else. Same. Same stuff. Sorry, but it's all like all over the place. So I'll have to like sit and look for better stuff. But yeah, man, this is all back from 2015. So yeah, that's what it is. Kush, can you hear me? 
I think it's on your end, man. I can. People could hear. Can slowly hear Sarthi. Take your Bluetooth thing off, man. Just go. Apologies, people. Just trying to work this out. Yeah, I can see you. Can't hear you. Okay, guys, we'll be back. Uh, we're gonna try this again. My God, let's try this again. Let's see third time lucky. Yes. Yes, we're back. Can you hear that? Yeah. Okay, I just put, I just did that on my tabla. That's coming through. Quick kick. That was me on these things. Oh, Paji Kida. You go for it. This is probably completely out of time, but we'll try it. It's good, it's good, it's good. Does it sound alright to you? Sounds great. I'm in love. Good I mean, it's more like Teen Tal. You were right. I mean, but it's more like just a four-four thing. It, it, it's not really any Tal. Really, it was just some kind of groove. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, yeah. But, yeah. Um, you know what I've I've discovered here right now, though. This baby, this uh, this little auto harp with that tabla sound. I really want to start experimenting with that. Yeah, it's nice, I man. Think... Have you tuned it? Have you tuned it to like a particular scale? Yeah, so basically what's interesting about this instrument, yeah, I'll show you, I'll show you now. Uh, so, it's, uh, you see those, you can see it, but, uh, let me put it in the light. Each string has got a recommended mm, yeah. note. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, and then if you come here, you have those chords. Mm. 
this particular chord and you're limited to them, which is quite fun. Because so you've got to be making music within those chords, you know? And it's interesting yeah, yeah. because, you know, you, you remember you, you were saying earlier on that um, in Indian music, you don't really have a, a harmony sort of basis. It's more modal and everything. So I don't know, I feel like this auto harp and the tabla, you know, it could be, that could be a good basis to, um, to start some, um, some new songs, you know? Yeah. Hello? Yeah, it could be the basic, it could be a good basis to start some new tunes, you know. So. For sure, man. Can I show you my favorite instrument in my studio? Go on, man. Sure. This, uh, this plastic thing right here. Oh, yeah. It's amazing, man. I'll show you the kind of sound it makes. Yeah, is that... Okay, go on. Oh, yeah. It's dope. And then you can... It's on all my tunes, man. It's number one. Really? Well, nice. subtly and, and, you know, somewhere in the mix or thing. Signature sound. That's what it is. Yeah. Can I, can I show you my, my favorite instrument? Yeah, go on. Yeah. So this is an instrument from uh, Mauritius and La Réunion. You love this instrument, don't you? I love this, man. It's my favorite. Comme elle était petite, papa m'a mon lila, c'est y'a moi, je dis moi de la vingt ans, je vais donner mes poumons à marier. Comme elle était petite, papa m'a mon lila, c'est y'a moi, je dis moi de la vingt ans, je vais donner mes poumons à marier. La haute à la vie, bonne maman, n'en n'a pas eu les mains. On arrive là-bas, comment c'est qu'il y a des tas moins gros La haute à la rive, le maman n'en a volé les mets. On arrive là-bas, comment c'est qu'il y a des tas moins gros Yeah, man. So good, man. <laughs> I think, like, it's one of those things that, like, doesn't work. Like, you've got to sing when you're playing it. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. I mean, otherwise it just sounds like some kind of shaker, but... No, but, but it when... kind of, like, it influences the way the loop of your voice goes as well. Do you know what I mean? Like, everything just works yeah. really well together. And I guess it's yeah. meant to be, like, I'm assuming it's, like, meant to be played together, no? Yeah, yeah. I mean, it's kind of, uh, you know, it, it's not really meant to be played together. You know, in general, in general, I mean, yes, it's a very vocal bass kind of music, mm. but... Uh, it, I, I guess, yeah, what you're saying is that there is that kind of cyclical, re that, 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 that cycle on that rhythm and, this, and the way the phrasing is, is done with the voice is very, very intricately exactly. li linked to that. Yeah. So, yeah, in that sense, definitely, definitely, absolutely, absolutely. Man. Nice. Yeah. Man. Yo, yeah. shout out Magnus Baba. John yeah, Magnus, Magnus, what's happening? Magnus, we need you here, man. Get some rhythm to that. No. I saw Adam. I saw Adam Betts is here as well. I don't is know he? if he's still here. Adam, are you still here? <laughs> um, but yeah, dude. So we um, we should have one one other conversation like that at some point. Somebody you know? said Hindustani music is the father of drone music. Thoughts. Well, like, I mean, if you mean by drone music, like people like Terry Riley and like minimalist composers in the 60s, 70s, 80s being influenced by a lot of like Hindustani music, then that's true. Um, yeah. Father of is always one of those, man. Like, let's just leave it the way it is. Like, yeah, influences. Yeah. Sure. Um, and yeah, I think a lot of like yeah, uh, neoclassical minimalist music, <laughs> you know, Steve yeah. Reich, all these people. Super influenced by you know Indian music, so yeah, for sure. Do you know? Do you know that kind of a stoner sort of? I don't. know, They came from that 
you know, band called Sleep. They were, uh, do you know? Do you know about Sleep? No. They were this kind of, you know, really sludgy, doomy uh, uh, sort of stoner band. But the an offshoot of that band was uh, it's called Om. And right. in 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 Om, they sing all all the lyrics are English translation. I think of Sanskrit text. Right. And and it's very droney, very slow, and I think they're also linked, if I'm not mistaken, to the people who are in Sun. Do you know that band, Sun? Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, yeah. So I think they might be linked to these guys as well. So mm. who knows, man? But yes, I, I agree with you saying that this or that is the father of you know this or that band. I mean, it's it's best not to be really fucked with because who knows where yeah. it all came from anyway <laughs> yeah 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 cool man all right well listen that was amazing uh to everyone yeah, who's been apologies. here apologies to everyone who kind of tuned in and had to retune in and then re re yeah and re 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 tune in and <laughs> uh, it's the madness <laughs> but we're trying to figure this stuff out so you know yeah 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 it's i mean you know this is uh I think the next time we do a jam like this, we should maybe go uh, on a platform that is more for music. But, you know, uh, I think also because people are staying at home a lot at the moment, it's a possibility that a lot of the broadband is saturated as well, you know. Thank you, sitting on a crane. Yeah, I had fun. I had fun, you know. Always have fun talking to Sarah. It's such a free-flowing vibe, you know. Yeah, man. No, I appreciate it. And, yeah. Um, yeah, man. You guys have some good, uh, a great lineup of people. Boom. <laughs> It'll be fun. So, yeah, thank you so much for joining us, man. It's great to have you, to have had you, and especially, you know, after we released our record last um, last Friday. Yeah. Yo, can you hear me? All right, take it easy. Bye-bye.